certainly reason to think that it's, it's not, a not unreasonable expect, expectation. Uh, justice and accountability lose, loses and the Army uh, wins. Is what, Jokowi aware of the Trump connections to the supporters of the coup movement? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I don't know when this will air, uh, but as we are speaking, as this is being recorded uh, next week, um, on a Wednesday, uh, the Jakarta gubernatorial election is due to happen. That's when it will be decided whether the governor, who is the kind of pretext for this street movement, will be voted in or voted out as, this is April 19th. as governor. Yes. And the day after the scheduled gubernatorial election, uh, Vice President Mike Pence is due to arrive in Indonesia for two days and to meet with uh, President Jokowi. Now, one interesting aspect of this is, is where does the U.S. stand uh, on all of this? Because on the one hand, uh, the U.S. has a long-time policy in countries uh, around the world of backing the repressive armies and security forces, but on the other hand, also backing elected uh, presidents, uh, as long as those elected presidents do not have a program that threatens U.S. corporate interests or the interests of the local rich or the fact that the U.S. is allowed to back the local army and security forces. Barring that, the U.S. is all for local elected uh, presidents. Uh, so in accord with that historic worldwide policy, the U.S. has up to this moment, uh, as, as far as I know, up until at least recently, been backing Jokowi against the coup movement. But uh, it's Trump's local people who have been helping to push the coup movement. Now, I don't know whether this question has come to the uh, attention of President Trump uh, himself. Uh, it could come to his attention through his business partner, Harry Tano, uh, through his uh, main Indonesian political partner, Fadli Zon, uh, through his other business partner, Setia Novanto, who's a famously corrupt uh, politician, uh, or it could come to his attention through Carl Icahn, uh, who is close to Trump, is his deregulation advisor from the White House, uh, and who control is the controlling shareholder of Freeport McMoran, the oil and uh, the, the mining giant of copper and gold, which has been uh, ravaging uh, West Papua, uh, taking their uh, gold and, and copper, but which, and this is quite significant, recently has been under challenge from the Jokowi government. For years, Freeport McMoran has had a free ride in Indonesia. As long as they paid off General Suharto and his cronies, as long as they paid off the army, various bureaucrats, they were able to do whatever they want. They were able to just strip the mountains uh, of West uh, Papua, uh, turn the rivers uh, indescribable primary colors from their uh, pollution, uh, knock off their uh, dissident workers when necessary. They were able to do anything. Uh, but now, just in the past year and a half or so, they have been under challenge from the Jokowi government, which is uh, demanding uh, a renegotiation of the contract between the Indonesian government and Freeport McMoran, and which has been re restricting Freeport's uh, copper exports. Uh, so this is creating a problem for ICON, a serious economic problem for Carl ICON. Uh, as this conflict between the Jokowi government and ICON's Freeport has been going on, the local lawyer uh, for ICON's uh, Freeport has been helping to lead the coup uh, movement to oust uh, to oust Jokowi. Now, I don't know how much Trump knows about this, but I know there's uh, some question among some officials in Indonesia as to, in the end, which side will the U.S. Come down, uh, come down on? Will it continue the traditional U.S. policy of wanting to keep an elected president in for kind of stability purposes and front purposes? Or might it align with Trump's personal and business uh, connections on the other side who are backing the coup? Uh, investigative journalist Alan Nairn will link to his piece at The Intercept. Tune in tomorrow for our coverage on March on Washington, of March for Science in Washington. And on Sunday, I'll be speaking at Princeton University. Special thanks to Sam Alkoff and Mike Burke. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.